The objectives of this module are to explain the complementary and contractual nature of drawings and specifications for a construction project, introduce master spec, the industry's standard organizational format, differentiate between full specifications and outline specifications, and provide examples of outline specs and the use of design narratives. For a construction project, the final design is documented by engineering drawings and specifications. The drawings and specifications are considered complementary. They work closely together to fully communicate the design to the builder, with drawings showing the extent, configuration, relationships, and dimensions of the work, and specifications establishing the requirements and standards of work itself and the backing services needed for the project. They work closely together to fully communicate the design to the builder. Said another way, the drawings answer where and how much, while the specifications answer the questions what kind and of what quality. To make this relationship between drawings and specifications more clear, let's look at an example. The Farnsworth House in Plano, Illinois, was designed and constructed by Ludwig Miles van der Rohe and is considered an architectural icon. The drawings for the Farnsworth House do a great job of showing the major structural members and their spacing. Based on the drawings, I could likely order the right quantity and size of I-beam. However, much of the steel work is actually exposed in this structure, right? How do we tell the builder that they need to make sure the exposed steel looks great? That's where the specs come in. One sample of text from the specs of the Farnsworth House reads, Very precise workmanship will be required in the construction of this building. The standard of excellence will be the exposed steelwork on the Alumni Memorial Hall of Illinois Institute of Technology, 32nd and State Streets, Chicago, Illinois. This is one small example of how drawings and specs are intended to work together to fully communicate the design. One quick note on the idea of fully communicating the design. In the construction industry, there's a challenging balance. Many people will try to use the specs to answer the question, how? But this can cause problems on many fronts. In fact, in most situations, the engineers are contractually responsible for the design, and the contractors are responsible for the construction methods. The contractor may use any means and methods to construct the design as long as the resulting construction complies with the drawings and specifications. So, as you construct your specs, make sure not to tie the contractor's hands. By avoiding strict definitions of how, when possible, you allow the contractor to employ creativity and technology which may actually reduce the project cost. You can imagine that spec documents for a major construction project could quickly become daunting. Luckily, while some military projects use a different system, the majority of U.S. construction projects use an organizational system called master spec to capture the specifications. The master spec format is broken down into divisions, with divisions 0 through 1 being procurement, contracting, general requirements, divisions 2 through 19 being facilities construction subgroup, Divisions 20 through 29, Facilities and Services subgroup. Divisions 30 through 39, Site and Infrastructure subgroup. And finally, Divisions 40 through 49, Process Equipment subgroup. The Facilities Construction subgroup contains requirements on existing conditions, requirements for materials such as concrete and masonry, thermal and moisture protection requirements, and details on finishing, furnishing, and equipment. The Facility Services subgroup is focused on areas like fire suppression, plumbing, HVAC, and electrical equipment. This subgroup contains requirements for everything but the equipment pieces themselves. As an example, under HVAC you may find the requirements for ductwork, but in this section you won't find specifications for the size of the AC unit needed. The Site and Infrastructure subgroup contains the requirements for earthwork and utilities, and the Process Equipment subgroup contains all information on the actual equipment required for the building. The master format of organizing specifications and other written information for building projects in a consistent way assists all parties involved in a project to quickly and efficiently find specific information for a project. It means that complex projects can be quoted with a higher degree of confidence, and it provides a mental framework for engineers and architects to check their work. For example, is that everything we need to specify about the concrete for this project? Each division in master spec is subdivided into sections. Those sections are also standardized. So if you want to specify the type of concrete for a structural component of a building and you knew the master spec system well, you would quickly flip to the facilities construction subgroup, Division 3, Concrete. And there you would specify your requirement in section 033000, Cast in Place Concrete. For those not familiar with the format, there are helpful descriptions of each section next to the title. Within each section, there are recommended or standard spec templates provided that you can select. Again, by using standardized specs, we're making it easier for everyone involved in the project, particularly contractors who will be bidding on this project. At the end of the project, every aspect of the project must be covered somewhere in the specifications, which means that as each major phase of design has begun and ended, it's important to revisit the table of contents and highlight or tabulate all sections applicable to the work. At 100% completion, full specifications are part of the contract for construction. Creation of a good set of specifications is critical to the success of the project. 
And while sometimes the specs are compiled by professional spec writers, often they're written by engineers and architects. Before we move forward, let's check your understanding of drawings, specifications, and the master spec format. Great. Now, you're looking forward to writing full specs for your senior design project, right? Probably not. And I understand. Due to the learning curve required to develop a full master spec set of specifications, most senior design projects will not require you to develop a full master spec compliant document. However, it's important that you start thinking about how drawings and specs work together. And it's important that you familiarize yourself with the organizational scheme. For those reasons, many projects should include a set of outline construction specifications. So let's talk a little more about that. What are outline specifications? Outline specs are written by the architects and engineers early in the process, at conceptual design or sometimes earlier, as a communication tool. They summarize the types of construction desired on a project, and they permit order of magnitude cost estimates. They quickly get everyone on the same page, and that's critical. If your project requires outline specifications, they should look something like this. The specification should be organized into the appropriate divisions and sections per the master format to the best of your ability. You should include all of the key technical details for your project, and you should try to include any details that may affect scope and price, for example site preparation requirements. These won't be a complete set of specifications, but they should capture the key design elements to the best of your ability. Depending on your project, it may be advantageous to create a design narrative that complements your outline specification. For example, here's a sample of a design narrative for a simple building. Standard AISC shear connections will be used at all typical shear connections in the building, unless noted otherwise in the drawings. At Southern Ironworks' request, the following connections will be used as the basis for estimating. Beam beam connections should be single double angle connection. Beam Column flange connections should be single double angle connections, and beam column web connections are stiffened seated angle connections. The structural steel in the outer base of the roof level will be sloped in one direction to accommodate drainage requirements, etc, etc. In the end, remember that your specs and your drawings work together to fully communicate your design. So, if it's helpful to add this design narrative element, please do. Some groups have found it helpful to start by writing a design narrative as they review their drawing package basically explaining the nuances of the design to another person, and then later breaking this design narrative up into standalone outline specifications. Your end product, whatever the form, should contain enough information for a contractor to give a rough estimate of the cost of the project. One final note on specs before wrapping up. As an engineer, you can write two types of specs, prescriptive specs, or performance specs. Prescriptive specs require that the engineer completes the design. It prescribes specific requirements to the contractor. An example, provide an insulated glass panel consisting of two lights of glass, each eighth inch thick, and a half inch interstitial airspace. By contrast, with performance specs, the engineer delegates the design to the contractor. The engineer indicates the performance of the component or system only. An example, Provide an insulated glass panel consisting of two lights of glass and a half inch interstitial airspace that can resist a static pressure of 50 PSF and a factor of safety of 1.0. This ties back to the idea of whether or not specs should define the how for the contractor. The right answer here? It depends. In general, it's best to provide performance specs so that contractors have the freedom to use new or different approaches that may lower the cost of construction. However, sometimes the how is truly critical, and you may need to provide prescriptive specifications. Just be mindful and aware of the difference, and make sure you're writing your specs purposefully. So that's it for outline construction specs. They matter, as simple changes to a design can have disastrous consequences. As you move forward with your project, take advantage of the files available in the resources section of the course site. There you'll find the ASC table of contents for master spec and a guide to writing specifications that will make your job much easier. Please complete the final quiz before exiting this module.